Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to making games. Boy, that's a fun intro to say. So I've officially closed the book on one of these Let's Make a Game series, and it's time to do another one. I said in the postmortem for Bombardier, or at least I'm pretty sure I said this in the postmortem, that I want to do a lot more by way of actual project management the next time I do one of these. By my estimation, I probably could have saved about five videos worth and probably multiple hours um, of, uh, of time working on Bombardier if I had actually planned things out ahead of time, instead of trying to just make it up as I go. Sounded good to do it that way to me in June of 2020 for whatever reason, but I'll be honest, looking back, I have no idea why that idea appealed to me to do it that way. Anyway, this next game is going to be a bullet hell, uh, much like Tower Defense, bullet hell is a genre of game that I often think about making. Uh, unlike Tower Defense, it is not a genre of game that I actually play m very much myself, and... As such, I can't say I actually know a whole lot about it. And that might not work out in favor of the actual game. I know that Bullet Hell players tend to have somewhat stronger opinions about, um, about the games that they play than Tower Defense players do sometimes. But for whatever reason, I really do like thinking about the system's design in, um, in Bullet Hell games. It's just, I guess the simplicity of it, you could say, just calls out to me for whatever reason. So what you see on screen right now in front of you is a uh, project management tool. Uh, which I have not actually used in the past myself, but I've had it recommended to me. It's called Hack and Plan. Um, I'll have a link to the to their uh, to their website in the video description if you want to poke around with it yourself. Hey. I can't say I know too much about this tool. I get the impression that it is geared towards um, somewhat larger teams than individual people trying to make games. Uh, it is it is centered around game design. Uh, that much I know. Uh, anyway, and since I uh, since I want to try to do a little bit more project management this time around. I'm going to attempt to at least make use of, of some of the uh, the project management features on this thing. So I've gone out, I've gone on, and uh, ahead of time, as you can see, um, written down a bunch of individual steps that I think I am going to need to uh, be able to work out in order to make this game happen. Uh, this is not going to be as large of a scope of a game as Bombardier was, and even calling Bombardier large was a uh, is probably a bit of a uh, dramatization. It took me a year and a half to make that one, but that's mostly because I was just doing one episode a week, and uh, and most of the episodes are probably less than 30 minutes. Anyway, if you're familiar with Agile, uh, the, uh, the Agile software development methodology, uh, you're probably familiar with the term sprints. I've broken down the, uh, the concept of making a bullet hell game down into uh, four sprints. Typically in Agile, sprints last like a week, maybe two weeks. It's all the rage these days for whatever reason, especially in game design. Agile is all about like fast iteration times, but I'm not really going to be doing like two week, um, two week milestones because I'm only going to be posting one, one of these videos per week on average. So instead what, um, what Hack and Plan likes to call sprints or what Hack and Plan at least calls sprints by default, I don't know if I can actually rename that or not. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to be more going with, uh, with milestones. So the same way that I had like the Act 1, Act 2, whatever milestones in the um, 3D Collision series, I'm also going to be going with that for, uh, for this Bullet Hill game. And I've got four of them set up. I've got, the, um, I've got all of these tasks that I've written down divided into four categories. Uh, gameplay, game UI, uh, content and polish, and release. And release is hopefully going to be uh, much, much shorter than the other two. Hopefully releasing the game should take no more than probably four videos, ideally two. So as you can probably see, um, each of these uh, each of these items on this on this project management list has an estimated cost of points. Um, this is more or less arbitrary. This isn't based on like the amount of minutes I think it'll take to complete a certain item or not. Uh, it's just my prediction based on um, how complex I expect the uh, the item to be. Hopefully, on average, I think I should be able to get through maybe 40 or 50 points per uh, per video. And I'm sure there's going to be, there's going to be bug fixing episodes and that sort of thing further on down the line that, uh, that slow the pace of the game down. Hopefully not too much. So unless things go catastrophically off the rails, uh, hopefully the series should be finished in about 30 videos. Especially at the beginning where things are simple and when I'm just getting started, I should be able to burn out honestly a lot more items than that at the beginning. But we'll see how it goes. So another thing you may notice is I'm actually recording this quite a ways before. I'm, um, I'm planning to actually start releasing the series. I'm not planning on making this entire game before I even post part one, the way that I sometimes do with, for example, Let's Plays. But at the current moment, on the 19th of November 2021, 
I'm currently at the very end of, uh, of Bombardier development, and I want to, uh, I want to actually record a few episodes of this before I do the, uh, the post-mortem for Bombardier, so that I have, let's say, a little bit more to talk about when it comes to what I think about project management. In that post-mortem, I'm probably going to mention that I, uh, that I attempted to give this, uh, bullet hell game a bit of a test run. Anyway, let's see, what else is there for me to talk about? So, um, I'm going to just poke through the, uh, the hack and plan boards. I guess I could call them boards instead of sprints. Um, hang on, can I actually rename this from sprints to something else? Oh no, did I call it that? Maybe I was the one who called them that. Anyway, it doesn't matter, they're not really sprints. So the bullet hell game that I played by far the most of, uh, would be, um, the Epic Battle Fantasy Bullet Heaven games by, by Koopomat. So as a result, it's probably a safe bet that this game by the end is going to end up looking something like that. Like I said, I'm not really a bullet hell player. I just, I just am drawn to the, uh, to the systems involved in creating such a thing. So I'm just going to give a rough overview of how this, uh, this code is going to be set up. I'm going to start out by creating a player, and the player is going to do player things like following the mouse cursor around. And then I'm going to, uh... Have the player shoot bullets. These are not really in order. Huh, anyway, this should this should go farther down when I talk about enemies. Anyway, then we're going to have the player shooting bullets. Uh, this should feature all the usual things, like having bullets despawn when they go off screen so that we don't just have a memory pile up. Um, there should be a cooldown between shots. Uh, bullets should have certain attributes like the speed, the way they travel, their uh, the amount of damage they do, that kind of thing. I'm going to be using actual, like, more actual game maker systems that I did in Bombardier. That's another thing I don't really know why I decided to do. Actually, I know why I decided to just make Bombardier almost entirely struck based. And that was because when I started doing that, 2.3 was very new and I wanted to, I wanted to go take a deep dive and playing around with it. But now it's a year and a half later and I would like to, uh, actually let game maker do the things that game maker is good at, such as handling object instances and whatnot. Anyway. Once we deal with bullets, I'm going to move on to, uh, to some, um, and I really should put these cards in order before I sit down to record actual episode one. Uh, we're going to work on enemies, and enemies are going to have a, um, some common properties. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on making a, an inheritance hierarchy that looks something like this. Future self, please remember to draw a nice little inheritance hier hierarchy diagram on the screen. And uh, both the player and the various types of foes are going to uh, both derive from a common um, a common entity class. And later on down the line, different types of foes, fancier types of foes like bosses or whatever, may uh, may derive from the foe class. Um, next, we need to uh, we need to make uh, the foes shoot bullets at you. I'm not going to worry about like differences in kind and like theming, like different bugs or whatever uh, for the uh, for the different foe types right now. I'm kind of expecting that I'm going to end up making this another Kill All the Bugs game because that's... Well, let's just say that I'm not a fan of bugs of both the uh, the arthropod kind, uh, nor of the, the programmatical glitches kind, and I want to live out my fantasy of just eliminating every bug that I come across. Alright, it's as simple as that. Next, uh, pick up, like, pick up items. So when you kill an enemy, they might drop more health or they might drop a, a attack power or something like that. Uh, those are pretty common in bullet hell games as far as I'm aware. Uh, different bullet types, so we might have different effects such as um, when a bullet hits an enemy, it sets the enemy on fire. Uh, that's always fun, borrowing, uh, borrowing some more inspiration from Bombardier there. Uh, recursive bullets, so when a bullet hits an enemy, it might split off into more bullets. Explosive bullets, that should be pretty self-explanatory. Then I'm going to start dealing with waves of enemies, so when um, each level is going to be composed of, let's say, 10 waves of enemies, and uh, they enter the screen in different ways. And the waves will automatically activate once uh, the last the last foe has been defeated, or maybe after a certain amount of time, or maybe both. There's going to be a decent amount involved in making enemies move around, like the way they behave. They might some might just stand in front of you statically without moving. Some might move back and forth. Some might try and home in on you. And of course, then they need to know how to shoot in their own ways to shoot at the player. Lastly, as far as gameplay systems go. Um, I do want to have some sort of, um, some sort of special attack for the player. If, I'm probably going to, like, self-insert, for lack of better words, and make the, uh, make the player, like, a dragon sprite or something like that. I just received an email that is, like, total spam, and also I forgot I had my email client open when I'm recording this. I usually try to close that, because that's very annoying. Anyway, player's probably gonna be a dragon, 
of some sort, and uh, the obvious answer to a special attack for that is to have the dragon breathe fire on everything in front of it or something like that. Um, and that's going to be a, a special attack. That's going to be it for gameplay. Um, next, we're going to move on to UI. It turns out that I really like the UI system that I whipped up for Bombardier using instances and, um, like, sorted into different layers in the room editor. And the UI for, uh, for this tower, this, um, um, the UI for this Bullet Heaven game is probably going to look a lot like it. Maybe I'll try and make it a little bit prettier and not just use, like, black and white buttons or whatever. As far as the game UI goes, this is a lot of pretty common stuff, uh, different pieces of information that you'll probably want to present to the player during gameplay. So, for example, the, the amount of time that you've been playing for, the, uh, the wave number uh, out of the, the total number of waves, the enemy's remaining score, player health, that sort of thing. I'm not going to read off every single one of these cards. Uh, there's also a pause menu, which again is probably going to look a lot like the, uh, the Bombardier pause menu. Hopefully making this whole thing should be slightly faster than it was in Bombardier, because among other things I've already done it and I already know how I want it to fit together. Resume the game, restart the current level, back to the menu, um, win slash lose menus, that sort of thing. Uh, there's also somewhere further down here like settings menu. Um, and a main menu with some sort of level screen, player upgrades, possibly. I'm not 100% on whether I'm going to include that or not. I'd like to, but it depends on how uh, how quickly things are moving on, moving along, and how much I want to, uh, to be done with making the game by that point. Um, collectibles. I do want to include some sort of collectible in this game. I'm thinking of every time you beat a level, you, uh, I don't know, you both unlock it, and you get, if you do well enough, if you have a certain score, you... Um, you gain some sort of collectible. Not 100% sure what that'll look like yet, but I, I want to do something like it. Uh, that was one of the ideas that I cut from Bombardier because I didn't want this going on for another like 20 bit 20 videos. And down here there's a list of uh, possible player upgrades. Again, I definitely do want to implement that, but it may end up on the cutting room floor depending on time. Uh, settings menus, settings menus, this is almost uh, almost verbatim the same thing as the settings menus in, um, in Bombardier. Uh, localization. So I talk about localization in games once in a while. I've not actually done it in any of the, um, well, I can't say in any of the, the previous, like, let's make a games because there's only been one so far, but I want to actually do it this time. Uh, this might get bumped up, like, to the beginning of the UI section because it'll be easier to, to start out accounting for, uh, localizing text than it will be to, like, try and jam it into the menus later, but we'll see. Uh, this will require writing some codes to uh, to pull out the correct the uh, the correctly localized string for any given language that the player is playing in. I've done systems like this before. I have something like it for Wizard Ducks going on right now. It's not super complicated, but I um I haven't really talked about it on video before, unless you count the one video that I made on it back in like 2015 that we like to pretend doesn't exist. Next, uh, board three content and polish. Uh, this is where we have to actually make the game look good. Um, this includes both room backgrounds. There's a chance, if I'm feeling ambitious, that I might make the room backgrounds uh, 3D, the same way that I made um, all the levels 3D in, uh, in Bombardier, but uh, in the spirit of making a 2D game, I'm going to try and attempt to get through making a game without using any 3D tricks, so we'll see. Uh, collectibles, I mentioned those. This is just actually defining what those are. Score calculation. Uh, things like kill chains and, uh, and making sure that shows up in the UI. I'm going to do this after I make the gameplay UI. I'm just going to probably fill in the um, like the score values during sprint number two with dummy values, um, and then worry about what the score is actually going to be calculated at, calculated as later. Uh, there's a bunch of faux designs. Oh, I guess I did actually write down that I'll be uh, using a bunch of different bugs for this. Did I write down behaviors for them? I actually did. Okay, wow. My uh, my past self decided to make my job easy for once. Anyway, this is um this is a bunch of faux designs. These are these are all the bugs that didn't make it into Bombardier. Or just like more bugs because I wasn't really thinking of making a, a bunch of different um different kinds back in that game. Uh boss design Madagascar hissing cockroach. Wow. My past self when I wrote this out a uh a few weeks ago really when was this? September I worked on this. I wrote out this these plans. I actually put thought into this. That's interesting. Uh, level design. I will do either uh, another live stream or um, another level design montage, depending uh, the way that I did for a lot of the level design in Bombardier. 
Uh, collectibles, I'm pretty sure I already wrote out a card for that, but whatever. And then there's dealing with audio for different situations, bullet, bullet shot effects, uh, player hit, player die, that sort of thing. This is probably going to be very, very similar to, uh, to how audio design went in Bombardier. Um, I'm noticing that there's more types of audio here than there was in that game. Anyway, um, save data, load data, delete save data. And any final uh, <clears throat> final elements such as uh, game polish, uh, writing the credits page, whatever the appropriate credits are. Patrons, of course, anyone who does art for the, uh, the bug designs or anything like that. And uh, lastly, releasing the game. Like I said, this is quite a bit shorter. Um, filling out program metadata, building executables for uh, Windows, Linux, Raspberry Pi, and whatever else, honestly, I feel like trying to deploy this on, uh, making a program icon. And... Um, of course, bug testing, bug testing the actual executables because things can go wrong that don't necessarily go wrong when you're running it in, in the IDE. Game Maker has been better about that lately than it used to be, but still worth uh, still worth testing on the actual executable and not in Game Maker. And then uh, recording a trailer, editing a trailer, throwing it on itch.io, the whole nine. Uh, there's also a chance. Back when I planned this out in what was it September. Um, we did not know, or at least I did not know anyway, a whole lot about what Yoji Games was planning for uh, Opera GX. Uh, there is a decent chance that, one, I will I will plan on trying to get Bombardier to work on that. Uh, between whatever today's date is and whenever I, uh, I officially finish that, have not decided yet. And, um, as well as this one. I'd probably, I'd probably at least give, give this one a shot. Uh, we'll see. Hey. I'll have to do a little bit of a uh, playing with Opera GX on my own so that I more, know more about it when I try to actually do anything with it. Anyway, that is the current plan for, uh, for Bullet Hell. I do not actually have a name for this project yet. Um, I think I called, I settled on the name Bombardier for the tower defense game pretty early because that's the name of a beetle that rather well known for, uh, for attacking its, uh, its enemies in ways that might be somewhat reminiscent of, uh, of a tower defense. I have not decided on a name for this Bullet Hell game yet. Um, if I can do that between now and when I actually record episode one, I'll just name the repository that. Otherwise, I'll probably give the repository name something generic like LMAG Bullet Hell or something like that, and um, decide on a name for the executable later. Um, any closing thoughts on this project management? That is, uh, hopefully I'll be able to stick with this. I look forward to, uh, to seeing these items on, on the, uh, the task boards uh, move from the open to closed categories, having a more, a more visual indication of progress towards the end than I really did with Bombardier. Honestly, during the middle of making that game, it really did feel like I was never going to finish that because it was hard to measure progress towards the end goal. So having something like this is probably going to, uh, probably going to help as far as motivation goes. I do not know if I have the ability to make this, uh, this hack and plan board public. I don't know if there's a, like, publicly visible only I can edit setting that I can throw on it. I'll have to look around for that. Can I, uh... No, that's that's actual users. Do not want to close the project. Anyway, if I, uh, if I can put a link to this project board in the video description so that you can see where I am after each one of these episodes, I will do that. Otherwise, the GitHub repository will be, uh, will be there, as it always is. Hey. I think at a couple of various points, I might have mentioned that, uh, the next Let's Make a Game that I plan on doing will be, uh, will be something that I put to a vote on Patreon or something like that. And I decided to hold off on that a little because I do want to, uh, I really do want to get a bullet hell game squared away. And I don't think this will take too, too long. So I hope nobody's really disappointed in that. But the, uh, the one that I plan on doing after this, I will put to a vote. And the games that I have, that I have ideas for that I want, uh, whatever ends up getting chosen, I think people are going to enjoy seeing come together. Uh, all of them are, are games that I really want to make, and a number of them are games, are kinds of games that uh, people have asked me rather extensively about making in the past. And um, I think a lot of people would be interested in seeing them made. So, that is going to do it for me for today. I am going to stop talking. I would say if you want to see the code for this, look for the GitHub repository in the video description, but I don't currently have any code for this. Although hopefully, once, I, uh, once the project actually gets underway with episode 1, there will be, and I'll retroactively put it in the in the description if you want to see. 
Um, if I am able to make this uh, make this project dashboard public, I will also have a link to that in the video description. Otherwise, uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you all are looking forward to seeing this made, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Posho, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, The Nothing Happened, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.